Hi guys, it's Carolina with alwayseexpectmore.com and today I'm doing a week 14 which is our bonus video. Our bonus video is this fun pillow that's made using that quilt top from the Cricut Maker. This is a different colorway of that same quilt that I made and I'm so excited to show you how to turn this into an envelope style pillow. Now first things first I do want to tell you I'm in a different location. I'm so glad you noticed. Yes, I am in an apartment. We had a flood at our house. And so that's why this video is just a little bit behind when I would normally have it up. So I apologize for that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for bearing with me in the new location. And I'm so glad to show you how this pillow is made. So I finished up my quilt top. This was the quilt top that I did in a second colorway. And I've quilted it. I quilted it with this variegated thread. Uh, this is Coates and Clark variegated thread that I got at Joann's. So I quilted it, just did a, a simple all over. And I think with a variegated thread, it really helped pull it together. I thought there were a lot of spots where the pink was too bright or the aqua, the teal was too bright and it was kind of pulling it in different directions. And by putting that variegated thread across it, I think it really pulled it together. So I love that. And then I went ahead and squared it up. So I have it all ready, just like I would if I were ready to bind it, but I'm not actually gonna bind it this time. And you'll notice on the back, there isn't a backing fabric. Instead of using batting and backing fabric, I used fusible fleece. So I just fused fusible fleece to the quilt top and then quilted through that. The fusible fleece has some great body to it. It's not too thick. It fuses right on there so I don't need to baste. It's kind of like a, a built-in basting system right in there. So it's all set. I've squared it up to 23 inches. That was the final size when I squared it up. So then I cut these pieces. These are the pieces for the pillow back. And each is 23 inches wide because that's the width of my trimmed up pillow front. And they are 15 inches tall. So now what I'm gonna do is get my iron is nice and heated up. So I'm going to take these and I've got the 15 inch side this way and the 23 inch side this way. And along the 23 inch side, I'm going to press over a half inch and you can feel free to measure this. And then I'm going to press over a half inch again. So I'm gonna have folded over a full inch. And then we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and stitch this down. So I'm gonna go ahead and press those. So now that I've pressed these over two times, I'm going to go ahead and do a line of stitching across here. I like to do a double line of stitching because it adds a little extra support, but also I just think it looks nice. So I'm going to do two lines of stitching and then I'm going to repeat that on my other set. So it leaves four total lines of stitching. I'm actually lining the folded edge up with the left side of the presser foot and that keeps my line straight. No need to go forward and back at the beginning and end because all this is gonna get stitched in place. Once I've done one line of stitching, I can do a second line of stitching and I like to do them about an eighth of an inch apart. I'm gonna repeat that with this second set. Okay, so I have the back pieces stitched up with a double stitching and I have the front all quilted and squared up. The front is right side up and these back pieces are right side down. And we're gonna place them on top of the quilt top, which is becoming our pillow top. So just put one down and then put the other on top. And these stitched pieces are going down the middle. So all of the raw edges are along the edge. And you just set those right on top and they should overlap a couple inches, about four inches if we did all of our measuring, right? Perfect, so now I'm gonna pin this in place all the way around. So I have this pinned all the way around all the layers pinned through and now I'm going to stitch all the way around. I'm going to use a quarter inch seam allowance and I'm going to stitch all the way around two times so I want to make sure that it's extra secure because there's going to be a lot of stress on the seam and I'm actually going to stitch it 
this way so I can watch the edge of my squared quilt because sometimes this larger fabric shifts a little bit while pinning and I just want to make sure that I'm on the quilt top and not on that back of the pillow. Always make sure that you remove your pins before you go over it, not after you go over them. Now that I've stitched all the way around, I need to clip the corners. Most people clip the corners across like this, but I actually like to clip kind of like a little winged shape. That looks kind of like that. And I'm clipping around the seam, and we're doing that so that we reduce the bulk in the corners, because if all that is in the corners, you won't get a nice, sharp, pretty corner. You want to clip really close to the stitching, but you absolutely don't want to cut your stitches. So cut about two to three threads away and just do that on all four sides. All right, I've clipped all those four corners. So now I can turn my pillow right side out. And I'll just use my fingers to push out those corners as best I can. You even though my sharp scissors are right here, I absolutely don't want to poke those through because I will poke them all the way through that corner and all my hard work will be ruined. So, four corners, just poke them out. So here I have my giant pillow form. You can just buy these at Joann's or online. This one is from Fairfield. It's a 24 inch pillow form, which is actually a little big. But when I was looking at my different size options, it was either go big or go small. And I'd rather have my pillow be over fluffed than under fluffed. I'm gonna cut off the tag here on the back. And then I'm gonna be very careful about stuffing this in because I do know that this is an overstuffed pillow for this pillowcase by, oh, about an inch to an inch and a half. To stuff in this pillow, I actually wanna stuff this side first and then it'll be easier to stuff that side second. So when I open it up and put my corners in as best I can. Feel free to scrunch your pillow up as needed. It will take its shape right back after you're done scrunching it. I can scrunch it down carefully. Side. Make sure to get the pillows, of, the corners of the pillow into the corners of the pillowcase because that gets you those nice, pretty corners. That four inch fold over in the back ensures that I have no gapping or peaking of the pillow in the back. There we go. And that's how easy it is to make a soft, scrunchy, oh so cuddly, quilted front pillow. The entire quilt cut out on the Cricut Maker. Thanks so much for watching you guys. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already because I have lots more fun things planned. And make sure you hit that little bell button so that you get notifications. And if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them below. I am still watching for your comments and I respond as soon as I can. Thanks so much for watching everyone. Have an awesome day. And thanks for joining me on this journey to make quilts and a pillow with your Cricut Maker.